All right. We are tonight in the book of James in our study. We're in chapter 2. And uh, we're going to pick up in verse 17. You guys are ready. And let me say I, I appreciate you joining in as we study God's word. You know, everybody can't always join in with us, but uh, I'm thankful that we have a Wednesday night Bible study, aren't you? All right. And it's great. You know, I, I know I make jokes about it and stuff and we tease uh, the ladies but it's great that there's a, a ladies book study on thursdays all as well that's great all right we are picking up in verse 17 and we began this discussion on the connection between faith and works last week so verse 17 puts it this way, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. It's dead. It's lifeless. And uh, so that's that's important. You know, our faith is alive. And of course, we're talking about spiritual faith, the faith that God gives us. And it it's active. It's alive. You know, God, God is life, right? God is alive. Jesus said even his words were life in John chapter 6. And so faith is alive. Faith is active. And so true faith, being alive, produces good works. It just does. It just follows. And, you know, again, I, I repeat myself, but we know that works in themselves, doing good deeds, whatever, do not, do not save us. Only Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross is able to, us believing on him is able to save us. We believe on the Lord. You know, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Now faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We know that faith, through faith, we, we are saved. We believe on Jesus Christ. And then, you know, the Lord, I mean, when we're open to what the word says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we're receptive to that, when we when we hear God speaking to us through the Holy Spirit, through His Word, and then of course the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God. When so people, if if people aren't saved, they, they tune that out. They're not listening. Can we agree on that? They're not listening. Even if you tell them, and I know Donna, you get frustrated sometimes with family and friend you know that even if you say anything it's like they're not hearing what you're saying and, and they're not tuned in so when someone is tuned in and they're receptive to what god is saying to the holy spirit then that's hearing faith comes by hearing we are tuned in with god and hearing by the word of god god speaks to us based on what his word says and and the holy spirit anoints that and you know, the revelation comes through his word that Jesus died for our sins. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when we are receptive to that and we hear that and we receive that, then faith is born within us. And that faith saves us, automatically saves us. If we believe on the Lord in that way, we are saved. It produces that. So faith saves us. Works do not save us. But as as I've said many times and just emphasize again tonight, if we are saved, our faith is alive, it's active, it produces a change in us. It will transform what we do. It will cause us to do good deeds, good works. It will affect our conduct, right? It, it, that will that will be the result. So that's the connection. There's a connection between works and faith. So if we have faith, it will, even though our works do not save us, it will produce within us good works. It will cause us to do good deeds. And 
And that's the connection. And if we don't change our ways, if someone just says, I believe on the Lord, but nothing changes, then they're they're not saved because it will produce change. It doesn't make us perfect. None of us are perfect, even if we've been serving the Lord a long time. I know I have. All of you have been serving the Lord a long time, many years. But, you know, that is, it's, it's faith in Jesus Christ, but it does transform us, and we're not perfect. It doesn't mean that, but it does change our lifestyle, changes our, our deeds, our actions, our thoughts, and we no longer... We no longer live a lifestyle of sin continually, even though we are imperfect and there's a possibility for us to make mistakes. All right. So faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, is dead. Dead. So it's not alive. So it's not alive. It's not really faith. That's what he's saying. It's dead. It's not It's not active. If it doesn't produce works, then you really don't have the faith we're talking about. The faith that comes from God through his word. He says, and he gives this example, you know, so they are connected and you can't separate them. Someone will say, you know, someone can present this argument. You have faith and I have works, you know, as though they could be separated. You, in other words, someone might say, as an argument against this, that you have faith alone, and I have works alone. I, I just do good deeds. That's, but it's not because of my faith. I, I I just have good. I just do good works, and that's what pleases God. And he says, maybe you have faith. And you don't do anything except say that you believe on the Lord. And. The person would go on to say, show me your faith without your works, separate. Separate faith, no work involved. And I will show you my faith by my works. In other words, I don't have faith, but my works demonstrate my faith. So I have confidence in my in my works to save me. That's what they that's what they're saying. I I I produce that. I you know, I it's not because of my faith is because I do these deeds that please God, and that's what I have. I have the one, you have the other. And he, he says this in verse 19, you believe that there is one God. That's good, right? We believe that. We believe there's one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. We know that, right? I mean, the demons know that there's a God, right? You know, there's one God. So what's his, what's he saying? He's not changing the argument. He's saying, well, they believe. Just believing is not enough. They believe, but they make no mistake about it. We know the demons are not saved, right? Demons are not saved. Demons don't do right, you know, are not righteous. They're not going to heaven. But they believe in God. It's not enough to say you believe. Do you want to know, O oh, foolish man, that faith without work is dead? Because even the demons believe that there is a God. You can't stop there with saying, I believe. And, and people that you know, maybe... Even you know your own family members are not saved, Donna, and and the rest of you, and friends, you know, or just people you know, people in society we don't know, may say, yeah, I, I believe in God. I believe J Jesus Christ came to the world. You know, I believe in the, that He's. I believe in Christianity, whatever. But they're not saved because it's not enough to believe that in ourselves. Not enough to. not enough to simply in our mind even in our heart because the faith we're talking about that saves us is different it's not the 
it's not the ability to believe things ourselves. It's something we receive. It's spiritual faith that comes through the word of God. It comes from the revelation that Jesus died for our sins and that through him we can be saved. We believe on him and that comes to, that comes to us. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes to us. And so just actually believing there is a God and believing that Jesus is his son and he sent him to this world to save sinners is not enough. A lot of people believe that, but they haven't acted on it. They have not, they have not believed in that in that way of believing on the Lord to be saved. And so even the demons believe and tremble, but you know, don't stop there. You can't separate because here's what happens, as I said before. If we actually have saving faith it will produce a difference in our life we will do good deeds will it will change our conduct will change our actions faith without works he says is dead don't you realize that faith without works is dead and he's going to go on anybody have a question or a comment this point so again just to emphasize our works cannot save us and if we just believe and it doesn't change our works that is dead faith and so they are connected in that sense we leave on the lord and save through faith but then that results in a change in our conduct and actions and the things that we do and so we do good deeds as a result so he goes on and continues the argument verse 21 was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar so he believed God, right? In fact, we studied that in the book of Hebrews. Here's what he believed. You know, God told him, take your son Isaac. One day, just, just out of the blue, God says, I want you to go and sacrifice your son Isaac. Oh, this is the son of promise. This is the one that he and Sarah had when they were old, when they were too old to have children. She was too old to conceive, but she did. And you know and so that was the promise of that god made to him that through his seed his and you know his descendants would be so great a number you couldn't count them that there'd be a number like the grains of sand on the seashore which you know there is a definite number but who could count them right god's the only one or the stars of heaven and the beginning of that promise was Isaac, the son. You know, that through him. Well, if, how's that going to happen if he kills him, right? And so that seems to be totally against what God had promised Abraham. So the writer of Hebrews tells us in chapter 12 that what Abraham believed in his heart was well if i kill him god has promised me the promise through my son isaac god is able to raise him up again and so he believed god in the promise but he also followed it up by taking isaac and he would have killed him because that's what god asked him to do right it was accounted to him for right the scripture was fulfilled it says abraham okay i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself when he offered isaac his son on the altar do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect or complete it finished his faith he believed god and so if god has asked him to sacrifice isaac he believed that God would raise him up. But he had to follow through 
and do what God asked him to do, a work of righteousness to, you know, which was contrary to any, any logical explanation. You know, why is God asking me to do this? But he did it because his, he believed God. He believed in the promise of God. That even though it, it was hard to understand that, all right, if I kill my son, God, God is able to raise him up. That's what he's going to do. He has to. And so he went ahead. So his his faith was made perfect or was completed by his action. So let's think about that for a moment. So we come to the altar. All of you have done this, of course. You, you make an altar. I mean, not necessarily come to the front of the church at the altar. Wherever it was that you gave your heart to Jesus, that was an altar, in a sense. And you confessed your sins and said you believed on Jesus to save you. You believed that he was the savior of the world and he died for you and that he was, and that if you believed on him, that you would be saved. You believed that and you accepted that and you were born again in that moment. But it didn't stop there. It can't stop there. It changed your conduct. It changed. You had to follow that up. It had to be combined with a change in your lifestyle. You became different in what you did. Not perfect, but different as a result. And that was the follow-up. That completed that. That completed your faith. So works completes our faith. And without it, it's incomplete. He said it's dead. It's, And here he says it's incomplete. It's not finished. And so our faith needs to be completed. Now, you can take that lesson so we can apply that to other people. If people come, even if they come to the altar and kneel or whatever, if they confess Jesus, but then they go back out and, and just live like they did before, there's no change in their life. They weren't saved. Because it does change us, doesn't it? It does change us. Again, not doesn't make us perfect, but it does. If there's no change, then they're not saved. Because being saved changes us. Our faith changes us. Our works complete our faith. Maybe they mean well, but it, you have to follow through. You know, you have to follow through based on, you know, Jesus told people, more than once, and I can give you many examples, but, and, and you can, you know, he, he told so many people, go, you know, go and sin no more. Don't, don't change how you, how you conduct yourself because of your faith. And that's what he said to all of us, you know, basically go and sin no more. Don't continue in your lifestyle of sin. Now that, that, that's true of, of being saved. It's also true as we, uh, conduct yourself in this Christian life experience. We are people of faith. We confess that. We believe on the Wake up, Pastor. Wake up. Yeah, I wanted to do this. Hey, how did it go with peanut brittle? Did you get it all done? We got it done. We're into okay. another four batches, I think. Again? Yeah. I don't think. I don't think we had a good year this year. Mm -mm. No. We're past. Huh? 
Where it has to go. I know. Yeah, I think he throws he out. Left, he left the house. Yeah, <laughs> he's left the house. Building. He's left the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Lost connection there for a minute. Had to go connect through my phone. It's uh I don't know what's wrong with my uh my modem. Oh. Said it failed, but I'm back on. Well good. Huh. Well, here we are. Anyway. Back. <laughs> I was saying, once we get saved and then we go through this Christian experience, we uh, it's still the same. Our faith is completed by our by our actions. We you know we believe God, and so and, you know anytime we say I'm trusting God for something, I'm believing God, you know our what we do will reveal you know if if our faith is genuine or not do i do i believe god or not you know we don't want to waver in our faith but you know we believe him and he can give us the assurance on things anybody have a comment or a question well he sure had some hearty faith that he was going to take his son up there and kill him anyway yeah Yes, he did. That'd be hard. Wouldn't it? I mean, that's how much confidence he had in God's promise that yeah. Isaac was a promise of God, a miracle of God, and that through him, the promise of his descendants being so much, so many number, and not only that, but that the Messiah would come through his descendants, you know, all that. Um, which maybe he didn't understand perfectly, but enough that he he knew the promise of God to him. And so in his mind, there was no other way of looking at it. If, if God wanted him to sacrifice Isaac, then God was going to raise him from the dead. It just had to be. Yep. And so he was prepared to do it. In fact, Again, you know, Hebrews chapter 12 tells us that in his mind, he'd gone past the point of no return. He was, it was already done as far as he was concerned. He had the dagger ready to, to plunge it into his son. And he, in his mind, you know, in our mind, right? Yeah. And he'd already gone past that, as I said, point of no return. He already had done it in his mind. It was just a matter of, of doing it. And he was, he was going to do it. And then the angel of the Lord calls out to him and says, you know, stop. <laughs> Don't do it. God, God has, God has another plan. He has, he has a sacrifice. He's got this bullet over here caught in the thicket all ready for you. And that's, that's what you should sacrifice, not your son. And so, which was God's plan all along. He was just testing Abraham. So, yeah, but, I mean, we may feel superior. I mean, we're under the new covenant. You know, we have us, you know, our faith is given to us through the, through the Holy Spirit and all, you know. And so Abraham's faith was remarkable considering he's not born again like we are. And But, yeah, he believed as an example you know, Galatians tells us he's the father of all of us who are of faith, you know, and his faith was remarkable. And, you know, his belief in God and what God said really was because, like I said, I mean, you just read it and, you know, we talk about the story, but if it can really hit you if you really think about what he was going to do. Yeah, he was, picture yourself in that position, you know, how hard would that be? Like Donna says, you know, sometimes we read things, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't really hit us what's involved with that, you know, and the reality of that. Can you imagine facing that? And, uh -uh. you know, and he even, 
after God told him to sacrifice his son, he even got up early the next morning to get started. No hesitation at all. Amazing. No hesitation whatsoever. Because he was totally convinced. And we should be the same way as far as being totally convinced that we are children of God, that God loves us, and that God is with us. And, um, you know, that what he has promised he will do and all those things. Can really learn a lesson from some of those people in the Old Testament, Abraham, for example. Okay, today, if we have faith, what are some of the works that are going to follow us if we have faith? Uh, we'll change our actual works that we would do would be, of course, um, our lifestyle, you know, as far as putting aside the sinful practices, that's one thing in our actions. Uh, also, of course, being the kind of person that treats others well, you know, that ministers to others as we can. We've talked about that. You know, he gave that example of a brother in need and so forth. We talked about that last week about doing what we can as God leads us because he does bring people into our life that we can be a blessing to. There are needs all around. There are physical needs, uh, spiritual needs all the time. You know, we're about caring about people. You know, God's love is in our heart and, you know, ministry. And we minister people in a variety of ways. And uh, and so we're about doing good things uh, you know, for others. And, and, and again, our lifestyle actions will change as well. And because, uh, you know, the Lord will be living through us. And it does, it does make a difference. <laughs> what we do and giving ourselves in service to God, you know, and doing things that Christians do and taking our time to come to church, things like that. And again, be a blessing, be a help as uh, God gives us the, the opportunity. Anybody else? All right. Verse 23 says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, this is what it says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. He was called a friend of God. So it was placed in his account as righteousness because he believed God. And he believed God to such an extent that it was reflected in his action. It produced the actions that he did. And it was, you know, you can't separate that from true faith. True faith produces actions that are in harmony with that. And again, our actions complete our faith and demonstrate our faith. And so Abraham believed God, and that resulted in what he did, and that was accounted to him for righteousness because of what he did which was completed his faith so in other words we will stand before god give an account for our deeds right again our deeds do not save us our faith saves us but because we're saved it changes what we do it changes our actions and we'll be judged on our works right what we've done or not done and rewarded accordingly and so that will be that's what's in our account you know what's in what's in our account as far as what we what we have done as god has directed us and god has led us god has empowered us so he goes on to say you see then that a man or a woman of course is justified or declared to be righteous by works and not by only because the works have to follow the faith for the faith to actually be real to be alive because they and we you know as, as, as he said so 
if our faith is not completed by our actions, then it's dead. It's not alive because true faith produces good deeds and a changed lifestyle. And so if we were justified, you know, we stand before God. It's not only making our confession, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but also what we do with our life. You know, what what have we what have we done? Have we continued to sin or have we turned our life over to, to the Lord and allowed him to work through us so that we, even though we're not perfect, that we haven't we no longer live in a lifestyle of sin you know have we have we showed kindness to others you know have we loved our neighbors ourselves? have we allowed the lord to lead us to to be a blessing to others you know these are the questions and and so not only by our faith what we believe but also by what we have done we are justified or declared to be righteous and innocent of the, of the things that condemned us before so it's just a way of saying our salvation being saved is not completed unless it changes what we do as well and he gives another example likewise verse 25 was not rahab the harlot you know it's in the city of jericho also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Yeah, she became, you know, that's an interesting story, Rahab. She was a harlot, you know, she lived a, a an evil lifestyle. Maybe there were a lot of reasons for, you know, we don't know all the background of why that was true. But She'd heard about the God of Israel, you know, and about Israel, how they were coming and defeating all their enemies and how God was with them. She believed that. She believed that. And so when they when they came, she hid them because so she turned against her own people because she believed in the God of Israel. She believed that he was with them. She believed in him, that he was real and it changed her life and she became one of the ancestors of jesus christ himself what a powerful story what a change of position you know from someone not even accepted in her own society very well she was a prostitute to go from that standing to to being someone who was a an ancestor of jesus christ the messiah I mean, talk about a change of position. That that's remarkable. And she was justified. I mean, it wasn't enough for her to say, "I I believe in the God of Israel." No. She completed her faith by what she did. She hid the spies, helped them get away, and said, "When you come, you know, will you spare me and my family?" And they said yes, as they would and because of what she did not only because of what she believed but because of what she did she was justified so that's that's all you know that's people get that wrong again i i don't want to repeat myself too much but works don't save us but it's also true that we are judged by what we do our faith produces a change in us and those are linked together so that what we do completes our faith and by that we're justified or declared before god to be acceptable to him be righteous you know he's doing a work in us i mean that makes sense doesn't it? if if he's changed us then it should be reflected in in what we do anybody want to jump in But that's what bothers me today. It seems that it seems that the younger generation you don't see a change in them when they say that they're saved. You don't see a change though. And you ask them and you go over it with them. Yes, yes, I did this, yes, yes, I believe this. But then you say, Well, I'm not supposed to be the judge. 
and you just hope that they are saved. Yeah. And it is a process. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not denying that. I know you're not either. It's a process sometimes of development, you know, and people struggle at times. But what I'm saying is if a person, if there's not any change at all, they haven't had any change in their lifestyle, then they're not they're not saved because it will produce. But it, it, sometimes it's I mean, for all of us, it's a process and some people struggle with things. They're weak, you know, they're a believer, but they're weak and maybe they change some somewhat, but not enough. And they're in that process of changing and, and God understands that. But, you know, what he doesn't accept is that there's no change at all. And all they do is say, well, I believe and that's it. And then nothing changes. Uh, that's that's not acceptable. Anybody else? Or Donna, if you have something else, something else to add. Mm -mm. Okay. And then he concludes in verse 26, this particular chapter. For as the body, our natural bodies, without the spirit is dead, <laughs> so faith without works is dead also. Isn't that true? I mean, if your spirit leaves your body, you are you are dead. <laughs> you are definitely dead no doubt about that because you are body soul and spirit and if the body is all that's left you're dead there's nothing you know you're not you're not complete you're incomplete you're lifeless and and he says it's the same with faith and works faith if it doesn't have works that follow it, a result of our faith, then it's dead also. It's not complete. There's, there's something missing that has to be there. All right. That's all I have tonight. Anybody have anything you want to close out with? I know this makes all the sense in the world to you. Next week, we'll pick up in chapter three because that's what follows. So that makes sense, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. All right. That's what we'll do. And uh, look forward to that. And uh, wish you guys well on the uh, for tomorrow night. If you're, I assume you're, st you're having the book study tomorrow night. So mm -hmm. as well, I'm sure that'd be a blessing. And, Look forward to seeing all of you on Sunday. You know, I have the I have the boxes in the front and the shoe boxes, and you know, pray over that. It'll be great. And do you have to you have to take those to the drop off location on Sunday or no Monday? Monday, okay. Yeah, just have to load load it up, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I they're, they're open Monday at two to four. Do you want to ride with me, Wilma? If Cindy doesn't have something come up, I, yeah, I would go with you. Okay. All right. And Donna, like I said, let me know about uh, when you want to move those boxes. I'm thinking Friday. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking Friday. Friday. Uh, that's that would work for me. That's fun. Just let me know the time. Yeah. Okay. I'll see when I'll see when Karen's free on Friday. Sounds good. All right, okay. everybody. Okay. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night, Robert. Good night. Hey, Donna, I ordered a bunch of those stuffed animals. So we'll see what they look like. All right. The ones from uh, Kohl's. Uh huh. I they I don't know if I'll have them by the weekend, but um, they said between um, the fifteenth and the nineteenth they'd be delivered. But I'm anxious. I haven't seen all of them, but I ordered a bunch of them, and if I like them, I'll order some more. But yeah, anyway. when I took Jack to him today, what's that? When I took Jack's candy to him today, yeah, he remembered me from last year. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I mean, I was kind of surprised, but he did. I come in the door, and he said, "Hello, Donna." He said, "How you doing?" And I said, "Fine." He said. He looked at me again and said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing fine. 
He said, well, last year when I saw you, he says, your husband had just passed. So I just uh -huh. want to know how you was doing. Wasn't that he remembers a lot. Yeah, that's what I, I don't know. How, how is his voice? Is it very strong? It's stronger than it was, but it's still raspy. Yeah, still raspy. Yeah, I I hate that. I'm I miss taking candy to him because that was the only time I saw him. Because mm -hmm. he used to have birthday parties for his dog. <laughs> yes, I've been to birth big birthday parties. At, He'd have a whole yard full of people. Oh, my goodness. And he had a full course. I mean, he had a whole meal. Yeah. All over that dog. It was oh, my a goodness. Standard poodle. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. And he and he spent a lot of money on. Um, I think he sent him down to Purdue to their their school school for surgery or something and he didn't make the dog I don't know but the dog didn't make it so uh -huh. but uh -huh. yeah yeah it was I, I think we I went to a couple of his birthday parties for his dog. Oh well I I, I forget why I seen him over there and he was at the he he pulled up at the church parking lot. Maybe it was on a Sunday morning and I was going in. Maybe that's oh. what, and he had something. Maybe maybe he was dropping off candy money or something, something. And, and he gave it to me. That's probably what it was. And then when he gave it to me, we started talking, and he was asking me, how you doing, and this and that, and talking, and that's when I had told him that my husband had just passed. And he just talked to me for the longest out there. Well, he's a talker, yeah. Yeah, he Like is. Mabel. He was Mabel's, but he's yeah. He made his hair. Yeah. And he did Sister Osborne's hair. Did you know Sister Osborne? Yeah. He did yeah. her hair too. Yeah. Yeah. So. I knew her. I seen her. I knew her through Opaline, but to say that I mean I to I I, I didn't know her as a friend, you know, really. Yeah. She was Opaline's friend. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably because she went to that church for a long time. Well, she went to Dalton Church. Uh huh. That's where I think that's where I got where I met her is at the Dalton Church. Oh. Yeah. But I felt real bad. I, you know, before she died, she was in the nursing home, and I feel real bad that I didn't go see her, but uh -huh. I. I I used to go visit her, but then when she got in the nursing home, after she moved to, to her daughter's house down in Crown Point, I quit going to see her and I just never did start back up when she got, went. They finally had to put her in the nursing home. Mm. So I, I don't know why, but she went and she she would call me. She'd call me and talk. So, Wasn't I, Jerry the name of her husband? Was it Jerry Osborne? Yeah. yeah, Jerry. Yeah. 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 Okay. They came. Well, I thought about you guys too, yesterday. I hate that I couldn't help you, but it went well, okay. Jackie, I, mean, I got Jackie to come, and Jackie always made it with Sandy. Oh, okay. So uh, Jackie did real good. She she um, stretched and cut and oh, cool. she put it did in the it off. yeah she 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 um she did a good job for us good good yeah did Tara do any cooking yeah yeah uh uh I think Karen was doing the most of the cooking and Ruth was watching her but Karen said this is the first time that I she said she said, "What it was, uh, uh, Ruth was messing with her and said, well, Karen did that one, one batch that was ruined, you know. And uh, Karen did that one. And Karen said, she wanted to snap at her. This is my first time. You're just supposed to be watching over me. <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't. 
Oh. Did Karen Karen finally got that hang of it that she could do it if we Yeah. 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 But she would do it with a thermometer. It would be easier for her even if Yeah. Yeah. Just but did she, it on her own. Yeah, but she 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 asked Bob for uh if he still had Sandy's table. And Bob told her he thinks he thinks he does. He would look and give it mm -hmm. to her. And she uh might try to make some here at home or something, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, but she'd have to have a thermometer. She'd I don't is that is that one still at church? Is there one at church yet? I don't think so. Okay, Cindy, I'm is not, mine out in is mine out? Yeah. Out out in the yeah, would you look hold up for me? Cindy's gonna look and see if mine is out there. If it is, if Bob can't find Sandy's, she can use mine. I want it back, you know, but she could yeah. use it if you want. Yeah, okay. She I'll just has to give me a batch of candy. Yeah, that'd no. be cheap. that'd be cheap enough. No. Yeah. If it's not out there, I'll look. Do you have office. plenty of supplies? Did you run out of peanuts? We didn't run out of peanuts. No, we got plenty of peanuts. Uh, we we run out of syrup, so uh, mm -hmm. we had enough to do it yesterday. But uh, uh, Carol and I are going to go back down to Ship Shawana to get some more syrup, and then we get to see the the, the Christmas decorations. <laughs> oh, when are you going? <laughs> Probably, uh, who's okay. going? It's just me and Carol. You can oh. go too. Yeah, you can well, go it'd too. Well, it has to be a Monday or a Wednesday, and then if you want to shop, I couldn't shop. Oh, we don't want to shop. We just want to go get ice cream, eat, get the syrup, and come home. <laughs> <laughs> My table, I have a table. My table, it doesn't work as good because it dips. Uh huh. But it, you well, you remember, you've used it. It's yeah. not as so. If, if Sandy, if he, ha if Sandy has one that's better, let, you know, see if he can find it. But he can't lift on stuff. Yeah. And it'll yeah. be heavy. It'll be too heavy for him to lift. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours out there in the garage? Mine is in my uh, laundry room. Oh, okay. So, so, so I don't have to look at church to see if it's my there. table is in the garage. Where did did you go out in the garage and look? Well, that might not be the right one. I have one that was Jen's, and I, that's the one that's out there. Look by the water heater. I have a great big one, but it's real heavy, and I don't think it, I, I think it's got some spots in the center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> by the water. Yeah, mine, the, the, mine that my, was my mother's. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, okay. in the laundry room. But that other one out there, I took it apart because she gave it to me as a table. So I took it apart. Mm -hmm. But I don't, it was so, it was too big and it was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It's out there. But I think it, there was something wrong with it that I couldn't, it couldn't be used. And I didn't know what to do with it. So it's out there in the garage. All right. Well, I'll tell Karen and, and let her know. You know. So if, if you can't get one from from Bob, we'll, we'll check. We'll, Bob, we'll, I'll, or if you want to use this one with its faults. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I will. I I will it's find out from Bob if he's got it. Yeah. So who? So is Karen going to go ahead and then and make it if if. If you go get syrup, is Karen going to make it, or is Ruth going to? Ruth will be there, I think. I think that's the understanding. Okay. But I, but I think I don't know. Karen could do it by herself. But, but you know, Carol said this is just the last year for Ruth, so we 
don't want to throw her out, you know. Right, right. Yeah. So. Well, well, you can't. Well, you can't go to Ship Shawana this Saturday because of the shoe box. I mean, this on Monday because of the shoe boxes. Right. So it would have to be, um, like Wednesday. Oh wait a minute! Is Wednesday my? I don't know what we've got. Do you have anything? You have anything that you have to need? Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh. Okay. No, we couldn't go Monday, or we can't go Wednesday. So we could possibly go the following week because we're probably not going to make it. Well, that's thanks. What is Thanksgiving anyway this year? Two weeks from tomorrow. Oh, the 28th. That's really late this year. Yeah. yeah, two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. Last year, was it like the 22nd or something? It was real early. Thanksgiving. For, the peanut, for making peanut brittle? Hmm? I, I don't know. I don't know when we're making it again. So, do we have, a lot of orders? Do we have orders? Not right now. I haven't talked to Daryl. He said they all liked it, but I haven't asked him, well, did they order any of it, you know? So, Daryl, Karen's husband. Oh, he took some. Yeah, he took a thing to work last night. And I said, well, how do the guys like it? And he said, they liked it. And then I left, so I didn't ask him, well, are, are they buying any? Do they want any, you know? I That's what happened with me. I took it to work. And the guys all loved it, but nobody wanted to buy it. Yeah, yeah. Well, as long as I would take it, man, they the, that was the best stuff they'd ever eaten. Uh-huh. Well, you think oh. they'd buy it, you know? Oh, well. That's a good cause, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. I'll ask Carol. Okay, well, I will see you Sunday. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I can't help you. I would come over and try to help, but. Oh, I know, that. I know that. That's okay. Just, I just, it makes me. Mm -hmm. I get so. I get so upset because I can't do things. Yeah. It'll be okay. We'll get by. Maybe we'll oh. plan for the 25th, Monday the 25th to go. Okay. I'll try to keep that open. Yeah, and I'll let Carol know. Yeah. We won't see the lights unless we stay for it to get dark. Well, it gets dark early. You know? Yeah. So. So we don't okay. have to get up at the crack of dawn, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. None, none of that. None of Kara, you or I are known for our early rising. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I'll see you, Donna. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.